<clears throat> you mind me in here? No, no. Nice boots. Yeah. Are you ready? All right, always ready. Uh, Kevin, thanks for joining our CR Wireless News at TC3 2014. Um, it's ironic we're here at the Computer History Museum uh, <laughs> talking about disruption. Uh, why don't you walk us through some of the major disruptions you've seen in the computer telephony and technology business? Sure. I, I think, uh, you know, every so often, you know, kind of sometimes align, aligning with decades, you go through some major, you know, technology transitions that these are 40, 50 billion dollar plus industries that transition very quickly to the next generation of technology. <clears throat> I've been fortunate or unfortunate enough to see some of those waves. But I liken it to, you know, mainframes when they went to mini computers, mini computers when it went to PCs, the birth of the Internet. Um, and I've worked for most of those generations of companies. And, and what I, I think tends to happen when you have these really big waves of technological change, the traditional in, entrenched players with large market share, large revenue streams, do not make it through the next wave. So you, you tend in each of these new waves to come, have a whole new set of players grow up and, and kind of lead that wave until, until something changes again. So if you look at the mainframe era, really only IBM made it out of you know, the mainframe era into mini computers. Um, it's still, still alive today, but virtually all the mini computer companies are gone. Um, and there were five or six brand new ones that really drove that generation of technology. Then there was a whole wave of PC players that came up. They were, they were not the mainframe guys or, well, I guess IBM made it through all these waves, so we can't, we got to give them credit where credit is due. But then the, the birth of the internet, it didn't, it didn't really destroy um, a, a last wave, but it created a disruption, you know, beyond belief where new players like a Juniper and a Cisco came in, uh, came to life and really drove the generation of communications and, and change, M much like um, at the same time, um, mobile communications was happening, you know, kind of along with the birth of the internet. So you have these new players that really emerge. It's hard for the big ones because they're trying to protect their legacy revenue streams. They can't transition and grow the new technologies fast enough to cover those transitions. And it starts to become a, a little bit of a downward spiral <clears throat> as you go. So they're, they're, these are really fun waves and, and really create quite, you know, opportunities for technology companies, but also threats to the traditional players in any one of the former waves. Well, violin memory has been a disruptor in the, in the storage space. Why did the incumbents see it coming? Yeah. I think, I think it's an innovation thing. So what, so what we did at Violin, and we pioneered the market, what we did was really leverage the volume economics that got created with Flash from mobile phones, tablets, next generation of, of laptops, where high volumes of Flash were starting to get produced by only a few handful of manufacturers. But it created a silicon cost curve that looked like what's happened in the compute uh, complex or the networking complex where we've had decades of uh, Moore's Law and reduc significant reductions over a 12 to 18 month period of time um, and we leveraged those economics and built an enterprise class storage system for, for large corporations like telcos or cloud providers like telcos um, that that really created um, a, a dynamic to apply Moore's Law and silicon to the storage environment. And the storage environment has been the bottleneck in the data center. And so when, when we applied silicon to that problem, we really created a major disruption and an opportunity for anybody with big IT infrastructure um, to really capitalize on the disruption and really change the economics of their business. Yeah, you talk about change the economics. Can you give us an order of magnitude? Um, perhaps how violin's been able to uh, materially impact the telco's cost structure. Sure. So I, I think the order of magnitude is the term of the day. So if you look at what the technology does, it essentially, d depending on you know, an environment you know, somewhat, but you're talking about sometimes an order of magnitude, 10x you know, throughput in terms of application performance, one-tenth the footprint. Um, one tenth the environmental, you know, uh, concerns that you need in a data center. So whenever you have very high scale businesses such as a telco, um, such as a bank, where they're under data center stress, these are enormous changes to <clears throat> how the, what the cost of the infrastructure is, the size of the infrastructure, and and as the telco industry moves more and more to software, the impact of this is more central to their business than just the networking side of things and removing latency in the network, latency in that communication part of the telco, but understanding how we can remove latency in the data center for these applications, particularly as you, you move switching and IMS you know, kind of control into a traditional IT infrastructure, this is the easiest way to get true you know, order of magnitude changes and how that infrastructure can get built out. Yeah. Um, 
in telco today, everyone's talking about virtualization, NFB, yeah. uh, SDN. It's another alphabet soup. Yeah. Where does Flash fit in? the telco move to virtualization? Sure. So so I think, you know, when, when you look at the stress of the data center and, um, and you know, big data, carried or big data, essentially, has just created a 30 to 40 percent annual growth in data, that's created data center stress. What, what I think is more particular, to, so that affects any, you know, big IT shop, telcos being one of the biggest in the world, obviously. So it, it affects their traditional applications the traditional IT. But I think it is more impactful as we go forward here because all of the uh, network virtualization that's trying to, to move all of that infrastructure out of dedicated switching kind of infrastructure into traditional IT, you know, server, software kind of infrastructure, this is where the huge impact is. Because all of those systems that are written to run on traditional white box or, or traditional IT architecture get the huge order of magnitude change in smaller footprint, smaller environments and speed of the application and therefore speed of the switching, speed of the software virtualization that's happening to run the network. Okay. Where do you see the next wave of disruption occurring, whether it be in the storage space or maybe perhaps adjacent or other spaces? Yeah, so I think dealing with this constraint that's happening in just as generally as more and more data gets created um, because of today big data, but eventually the internet of things where, you know, today we're dealing with, you know, $7 billion, $7 billion uh, mobile phone users or whatever, but in, in, the, in the future when it's 30 to 50, you know, billion, billion devices, excuse me, um, that are all hooked up, it's going to create more and more data. So I think that the, the, the creation and the expansion of this puts more and more stress on any kind of IT infrastructure that you're building, and particularly because of the scale of a telco, they're under the biggest constraints that exist. So I think you have to do, really do all three things, and the three things that you need to do are cloud architectures, so that when you can build out rapidly and you, you're moving things into a kind of a, a generic kind of infrastructure that can be rolled out, used for lots of applications, and be able to leverage resources. You have to virtualize so that you're sweating every asset possible um, as you go through that, and you have to move to silicon for, for storage. So I think cloud architectures, virtualization of everything you can virtualize, and then silicon for storage. It's really the three of those things that you have to do together, together to contend with a large telco that's going to be dealing with 40 or 50 billion, uh, 50 billion devices globally connected to, the, connected to the network. So Kevin, final question. Um, in many ways, Violin did pioneer the flash storage business, and you had the incumbents you kind of kicked the incumbents. They're waking up. Yeah. They're moving fast in the flash. How does a, a challenger like Violin Memory stay ahead of those guys? Sure. So I, I think we're fortunate enough that we pioneered the market and we were able to enter at the you know top of the pyramid. So we have you know 300 plus Fortune 500, Global 500 size accounts. So we are already in the most mission critical applications of the biggest accounts in the world. So I think that footprint is important. Um, the second is I think we have we are we were on our going on to our fourth generation of technology. So the the way we've proven out you know some of the technology and have a lot of the base IP from being the founder. Uh, of the of the uh, the architecture, but also, you know, really having that, you know, scars of how this new technology works and how it disrupts and what does that mean. So those generations of technology and the lead that we have in that, you know, we've essentially been able to bring the cost down by about 75% over the last couple of years. So when I talked about that silicon cost curve, you know, when you talk about reducing, you know, on that kind of cost curve by maybe 75% in just the last couple of years, we've now come in to, to a realm where we've way, way crossed over total cost of ownership of what it does to the data center um, and the business benefits. But now from a capital spending standpoint, we can, ma we can match or, or really come below hard disk drives on CapEx. So I think we, we have quite a lead, I think, um, you know, improving out the technology and the cost structure that it's still uh, very far for, I think, the incumbents, uh, the incumbents to get there, even, even with a lot of acquisitions they, that they've made. Great. Kevin, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. I think we would all have five, five, five points. Were you here or did you make a special trip over? Uh, I was here yesterday, but I kind of buzzed down. We're not too far. I couldn't get those billions of dollars out instead of, you know, <laughs> connections. But.